take away our sins, O Lord, have mercy on us all. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo.
are reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord, or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. <clears throat> he search every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all the discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet, later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your dropping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjoint, but healed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
stations banded together to form a single massive station named the Ark, where there are about, about 2,400 people alive. Three generations have been born in the space, and since the resources are scarce, all crimes, no matter their nature or severity, are punishable by death. The people found guilty will be sent outside of the spacecraft and will be floating on the orbit, unless the perpetrator is under 18 years of age. After the ARC's life support systems are found to be critically failing, 100 young prisoners are declared expendable and sent to the surface of the Earth in a last-ditch attempt to determine if Earth is habitable again. And the young people arrive on the beautiful planet they have seen only from the space. Confronting the dangers of this rugged new world, they struggle to form a tentative community. However, they discover that they are not only ones, that not all humanity was wiped out. There are people on Earth who survived the war and they are called grounders. Of course, the name was given to them by the survivors, by the people who landed on the planet. The Ark consists of the space stations previously representing the nations of the UK, USA, Australia, Canada, China, Japan, India, Russia, Venezuela, France, Brazil, and Uganda. Dear brothers and sisters, the movie reminds me of today's first reading in which Isaiah's prophecy speaks to the Babylonian exiles returning to Jerusalem after 47 years in captivity, especially to the younger members with their pagan wives, telling them that salvation is not only the Jewish monopoly, but that is why Yahweh welcomes the pagans also into Judaism. The prophet's great book ends as it began, with a vision of all peoples of the world streaming toward Jerusalem, acknowledging and praising the God of Israel. And in the Gospel today, as Jesus continues his faithful journey to Jerusalem, he answered the question as to how many will be saved. By answering how to enter salvation and how urgent is to strive now before the Master closes the door. Jesus explains in today's Gospel who will be saved, how, why, and when. And he tells that anyone who follows him through sacrificial serving and sharing love will be saved. Jesus also admonishes his followers 
to concentrate on their own salvation instead of worrying about the salvation of others. In the Holy Land, one of the most visited places is the town of Bethlehem, south of Jerusalem. And there, in Bethlehem, there is a wonderful basilica, basilica of the Nativity. It is the oldest church in use in the Holy Land, dating from the 6th century. Most of the churches in the Holy Land were destroyed by the Persians in the year 6614. But this one was spared. And the secret of this is that the entrance into this ancient basilica is not very imposing. It is a very small and low door which only admits one at a time. Over the centuries the entrance got even gradually smaller to prevent people taking away large amounts of booty. Nowadays the door is called the door of humility and all but children have to lower their heads to get through it. It reminds us of that very small low door into the great basilica by the words of Jesus at the beginning of today's Gospel. Try your best to enter by the narrow door. Just as a small narrow door leads into the wonderful basilica of the nativity, so in the Gospel reading, the narrow door Jesus speaks about leads into a great feast at which people from the east and west, from the north and south, have gathered. In both cases, there is no comparison between the size of the entrance and the size of what is, what lies beyond the entrance. A narrow door leads into the wide open spaces of God's life. To understand it better, most cities of the ancient world were surrounded by walls that had large gates in them. And Jerusalem had about 12 gates that were large enough for the two-way traffic. People moved through these gates to do business, to shop and to visit their friends and relatives. These gates, however, were closed at night for the security reasons, in case the city came under attack but an, by an invader. There were also smaller gates through which individual citizens could be allowed to enter the city by the guards without exposing the city to danger. And these smaller and narrower gates were what Jesus is talking about in today's Gospel. These smaller gates were like turns tires. Only one person at a time could enter them. Jesus repeats Isaiah's image of the final banquet. He does not want his followers to presume that they can sleep through the through to enter his father's house. Jesus is not looking for casual acquaintance 
from us, but he is looking for the real dedication. And the parable of the locked door, which we heard, warns us that the time is short, that each day sees endings and opportunities missed. Opportunity will not knock twice at your door, we are being reminded. Every evening when we pray the night prayer, in the beginning we make the examine of conscience. We recall what happened during the day. And we ask God's pardon for the faults and sins of the day we have committed. We ask ourselves how conscious was I this day of God's numerous gifts. How well did I respond to the opportunities to bear witness and serve in Jesus' name, to forgive, to feed, to clothe, and to love those who enter my life? How much did I strive today to enter through the narrow gate of sacrificial love in action? Dear brothers and sisters, we need to cooperate with God's grace daily given to us. By choosing the narrow gate and narrow way of self-control and self-discipline of our tendencies, evil habits and addictions. By loving others, seeing the face of Jesus in them and sharing our blessings with them. Also, through daily prayer, Bible reading, receptions of the sacrament of reconciliation and the sacrament of the Eucharist. It is the narrow way of unconditional and unremitting love. Mere faith in Jesus and membership in his church by baptism cannot guarantee salvation. Being born Christians or Catholics and being baptized doesn't guarantee that we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Everyone of us has been redeemed by Jesus Christ. But to save ourselves, we need to cooperate with the God, with God's grace. Some of the fathers of the church interpreted the narrow door at the small place in the heart where one says yes or no to what one knows to be true. It is the one place into which no external force can enter to shape or coerce one's choices. And this place is what St. Teresa of Avila calls the center of our soul, where God dwells. And that means that Jesus is the narrow gate, the way by which any person must enter the heavenly city. There is a sense of urgency present here. Salvation is offered to all, but it is not forced upon anyone. If we do not seize the moment for what it is, a moment of grace in which to act, then before we know it, the time we have come to close the door. Dear brothers and sisters, every moment we live 
is an opportunity for grace, an occasion to take action as disciple of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now let us stand, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things which is one and which is one. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because God and Mary, such as I shall be the Father, through whom all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and with the Holy Spirit was superior in the Virgin Mary and the beginning. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day in the presence of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, heavenly, and absolute church. I confess my petition for the point of view and salvation. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of the difficulties we all encounter in life, as we try to pass through the narrow gate of a genuine Christian life, let us ask for the Lord's merciful help. Let us say together, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Church, the home of all peoples, may she welcome all cultures and traditions in order to purify and enrich them with the values of the Gospel. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the Holy Father and all bishops, may they be ever more signs and instruments of God's love for all human beings. In love, in their pastoral undertakings, let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all those who experience the difficulty of living according to the Gospel, May they find comfort in the thought that God rewards everyone according to one's efforts. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For our community, may every member feel appreciated and supported in one's constant effort to live according to the teaching and example of the Master. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For each of us and all the people dear to us. May we not be discouraged by the challenges we encounter, but remain intent on building bridges of love and solidarity with all those around us. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Hear us. Let us pray for the souls of Yuriana, Puji, Suratmi, Jacinta, Sebare, souls of Ikaya, Gregoria, Roque, Salvino, Ondoi, Raimondo, all the souls in Purgatory, may the loving God forgive their sins and accept them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously Jesus. hear us. God, our Father, we thank you for making us your sons and daughters in Jesus, our brother, mother and savior. Sustain us in our effort to get closer to you through the narrow gate of a constant obedience to your will. We ask this through him who lives and cares forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The Mystery of Faith.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanksgiving.